a, a written um, page of the meds that you're taking and, and, how, and the dosages that you're taking, how long you've been taking them is, is really nice. Um, another one that was that's really great that sometimes people come with is a, is a chronological line. So they'll say, you know, when um, in 1990 this happened and then I had this surgery and then this trauma and then this. And that's really relevant to me because uh, the chronology of the injury helps to uh, allow me to visualize how that chronic pain is being perpetuated perhaps as a result of this prior incident. And so um, that sometimes is helpful. Um, having your um, diagnostic reports is huge. Now, you've been a patient uh, yeah. <laughs> for quite a lot, so yeah, do you time. have any yeah. ideas? Keeping a running list of things that you want to ask each provider. Mm -hmm. So I have mm -hmm. notes on my iPhone, and I have to ask PT, or remember to tell PT, or remember to tell the neurologist, remember to ask the rheumatologist, a different one for each provider, and um, to understand maybe the, t the time management component, but mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe asking the provider at the beginning, okay, so you know, what What are the things, what do you have in mind for today's sessions? I have some questions, but I also, you know, if you as the provider have something that you're like, oh, we really need to do this with Cheryl today, I don't want to derail your session with my ideas. It, um, so it is really is, I guess what I'm realizing as I'm talking, is it really does come down to that partnership, yeah. that you have to really have this trusting relationship back yes. and forth. Um, the other thing in some clinics are experimenting with this more or open to this more than others, but um, utilizing whatever um, confidential messaging system mm -hmm. that the facility has. Mm -hmm. So if they have just simple, you know, like we have my chart at the polyclinic here, you guys have like protected emails where, you know, I could send you maybe a quick email, say, look, you know what? Um, I remember sending one to you and my other PT here. Um, I went on this hayride thing with my son <laughs> and it's been two years since my car accident. I thought my neck was doing a lot better, but it really got wrecked with all those bumps. And so, you know, let's just, Think about, or I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm warning you. I'm coming yeah. to this appointment with more right. inflammation. Um, and I always love it when patients reflect in, on, on a session and they'll either rewrite their home program like you oftentimes oh. <laughs> do <laughs> with pretty pictorials normal, yeah. and everything. <laughs> um, but, uh, but also um, to come back with, hey, um, I tried to do the session similar to how you do your session. So I, mm -hmm. I, I checked my baselines and then I did my home program and then I went back and I reassessed mm -hmm. myself to determine the efficacy, the effectiveness of your home program. That's really helpful because then yeah. I go okay we're on to something this is working or what is it that's not allowing that to happen at home that's happening here and then I can zone in and try to problem-solve knowing what to do is different than doing it yes so um, I, I joke with some of my providers including PT that it's like here's my walk of shame because I <laughs> tell you I, I know exactly what I was supposed to do last week right and here's my confession yeah. talk about why yeah. well I have a child I got a new puppy like what are all the things well, those are those are valid excuses for getting distracted mm -hmm. but let's problem solve that mm -hmm. can we maybe do like some um, some of the exercises with my son while we're brushing our teeth mm -hmm. we get so much into the, the information the information is important the mm -hmm. information is is God right it's like mm -hmm. I'm gonna educate the patient and then once I educate them, they're obviously just going to do it because they just <laughs> know what's right. But, you know, basic behavioral psychology tells us that, you know, what, how many people in the world right now know that diet and exercise is going to help them lose weight? Probably 98%. Right. But does that mean 98% of people do it if that's their goal? No. Human, no. human motivation, human behavior is much more complex. So yeah. problem solving, the behavior and the psychology behind why. I guess it comes down to communication again. Yes. <laughs> that that you, you can communicate to... what the barriers yeah. are to your home program. And maybe it's not effective. It doesn't change me, so I don't do it. Or maybe yeah. it's I can't chronologically get it into my day. Or maybe it's, it's too you know, much all or those too things. Little. Yeah. Circling back to what we talked about way earlier is being holistic and looking at the whole patient.
or just in general, any kind of do's or don'ts that help um, a pa- when a patient brings, okay, I'm gonna start it again. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> okay, 